One of these teams will punch their ticket to the district championship on Saturday with a victory tonight in the D2 semifinals. We've got the top seed in Ontario and number six Perkins competing at a soggy Lexington soccer complex. And it's coming at you 100% live and free wherever the internet can be found. Streaming on smartphones, tablets, TVs, and PCs. And it's all on the way. Next.
unbox the icons, and turn up every moment with Frito-Lay Variety Packs. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Coming from the Shelby Whippets, Isaiah Ramsey. He's caught our attention over here, and we're certainly going to keep an eye on the Willard Flashes. We will see you next week on the Stat Leaders Brought to you by Spitzer. Folks, and welcome inside the Mechanics Bank pregame. I'm Brian Skronsky. Got the great Jesse Ryder with me here tonight. And we've got two programs, Jesse, with some uh, pretty contrasting histories. Lady Warriors today. Basically, they play for the district championship every year. If they win tonight, I think they're going to go into the district finals for the 14th straight year. And on the other side, we got a Perkins squad. This is their first time ever being at the district round. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a fun matchup tonight. Obviously, both teams come in with a great record. Ontario 16-3, and three, Perkins 13-2-3. and three. A little bit di different strength of schedule between the two teams, and as you mentioned, different history as well. You know, I think Ontario is kind of used to being here, and Perkins, this is all brand new, coming off a big overtime win against Mansfield Senior. So it's going to be interesting how those emotions kind of all play in and how the game factors out after all that's kind of decided. All right, so for Ontario, they've outscored their tourney opponents 17 to 0 so far, 16 dubs on the season, as you mentioned. And their typical match scoring margin, Jesse, almost five and a half per clip. I know that they play in the MOAC. They don't get a lot of great competition in there, but you look at the non-conference schedule, and it's probably the best in North Central Ohio. Absolutely. Between this and Mattis, I mean, these two teams really play a top-notch schedule year in and year out. And so you look at kind of their results, the, the teams they've beaten, the games they've won, the teams they've played are incredibly impressive up against Perkins who you know, plays in that, that Sandusky Bay Conference and it's not known for its soccer. Certainly Perkins has done a great job this year, uh, but has struggled to come out of this district, especially as of late. Uh, and so certainly uh, two different types of schedules can be matched up here tonight. For Ontario, man, what a shot in the arm they've got from the freshman class. But in particular, Hattie Yugovich has been, I mean, probably the best player that we've had in the entire area. Just look at the numbers, Jesse. I mean, so uncommon for a ninth grader to put up. This is even beyond what we saw from Taylor Huff a few years ago when she made her way onto the scene at the high school level. Yeah, you know, I, you and I have talked all season long about the, the impact that freshmen can have and just what that can look like. And you know, the difference that they can make. And you see this this group of Ontario freshmen. There are three, four freshmen who are not only just getting minutes, they are contributing. And not only just contributing, they are becoming key players for their team. And so you look at Hattie and Addie and the goals that they have scored and the quantity and quality of goals they have scored is really an impressive feat. 
Yeah, you see the numbers by both of them have been absolutely unbelievable. All right, Perkins, back-to-back -back SBC champs, first ever league title they won just a season ago, and then they followed it up this year. So they're starting to put together a little bit of continuity now, Jesse, and this is a team, as I mentioned, they just won their first ever sectional championship last week. They needed overtime to do it, but I like a lot about what they got going on. Sure. Certainly, they are creating their own history right now, and, and one of the most uh, probably well-respected teams of their of their girls' soccer history. This team is accomplishing things that have never been done before, and, and so it's interesting. You, at some point, you got to kind of rein it in a little bit, and you got to play soccer again. And so you can't really just be excited about the success that you've had. You've got to be more concerned about the success, success you're going to have. And so we'll see what what is the kind of maturity of this Perkins team. How does that hold up in a game in an atmosphere like tonight? Yeah, we're about to find out. So go ahead, break it down to me. What, what's the key to the contest here? How do you see the Lady Pirates getting it done? You know, I think the longer this thing is 0-0, the more it favors them. You know, if they can kind of prove that they belong, they can prove that they can play at this level, I think it's confidence for them. And so just to try and not give up any cheap goals, any early goals, just try and keep the ball and really work to eliminate the chances that Ontario can get. And I'm going to go with a little pirate pun here. Just don't hit yourself in the peg leg, Jesse. You know what I mean? you got to stand tall out here. If you don't cost yourself bad opportunities, at least allowing Ontario to get some great ones, I think that they can at least hang tough in this match, and that's all you need. You just need to be able to give yourself a chance, and if they can do that, it could be fruitful for them here tonight. Absolutely. You know, this is an Ontario team. They're very opportunistic. And so if you make some bad mistakes or really just any mistakes, Ontario's got the caliber and level of talent that they'll make you pay for those mistakes. And so you've got to be really careful. Obviously, the expectation is not to play a perfect game and not that you'd never turn the ball over, but just really limit how you make your mistakes and where you make the mistakes. You've know, you got to be careful. You don't let Ontario get free in transition, be able to go to goal and just get the shots that they want to get off. I think you just really got to kind of pack it in, play smart defensively, and create the chances that you want to create. Lady Warriors donning the gray unis tonight with the blue shorts. Perkins is in the white uniforms with the black. Ontario with an early corner kick, just, just under a minute played, and they're already on, down in the attacking end with a corner here. Addie Pittman will be on for the corner. Great left-footed free kick specialist. Let's see what she does with the ball here. Puts it up top. Gave her girls an opportunity for it. Smart play by Addie Turnbull. They kept possession, keep them in the attack here, just bounce the back. Addie Pittman with the left foot she wants it on, just misses a little bit wide of the goal there, but not a bad opportunity for Ontario. Here's the type of play for Perkins. you got to kind of figure out, you got to transition out of the back. Ontario puts a pretty high pressure on up the field, and so you got to be able to just kind of keep composure, don't kick the ball away, don't kick it out of bounds, but get the ball out of your own defensive third, or Ontario will make you pay for it. See Ontario's already back in the attack right now. It's a quick turnover by Perkins. Poor clearance by Perkins as well. And Ontario's going to have the ball about 30 yards away. And just not a whole lot of smoke behind that one, but testing the keeper here early on. Two shots so far by the Lady Warriors in the early going. The latest from Natalie Spencer. Yeah, I think both teams are going to be okay with that shot. Perkins is going to have to live with 30-yard shots. And Ontario's like, you know what? It's cold. It's rainy. We've not seen what this keeper can do. Let's just put some shots on. You want to force her into a little bit of a tougher save, but... Right now, Ontario just keeps winning possession, getting back in the attack. Here's a good opportunity for the Warriors as well. And again, they don't produce a very good shot out of it, though, Jesse. This yeah. is Bolakovsky this time. But an another one of these dynamic freshman playmakers, at least getting in the mix. Yeah, uh, you know, a great opportunity there. Certainly got some space to go forward. I think you got to go back post on that ball, force the keeper into a save. Keeper got just got out of the way and gave it up for a goal kick there. But you got to force her to make a save there, keep it on target. Just low, hard, and on target. It's kind of the old-fashioned coaching advice. You just you know, you force the keeper into a save and just see what happens after that. It's a good build-up by Ontario again. I mean, they're just two or three passes away from going forward every time. Perkins is going to have to find a little bit of a rhythm, and they, you don't want to defend for 80 minutes. you got to get the ball out of your own third here and just get up the field, let this game be played more of the middle of the third of the field. Or maybe even the attacking third, but you can't just defend in your own third for 80 minutes. Ontario's too good. Lady Warriors win it out of the air, but it drops down at the Perkins' feet. Coach's kid, Maggie McVeigh, just lost the handle that time. 
So it's back to defending here for the Lady Pirates. And Yukovich turns the corner nicely there. Got some space to go forward. That's the, that's the right play. You can see her going for the back post there. Perkins does well to come out and defend. Gives up a corner in the process, but certainly you can see, see the space that she creates there. It's a great ball in. It's going for the back post there, but Perkins defends it nicely. But it will be another corner kick for the Warriors. Off the set piece. Ooh, that, that's always a frustrating play as a coach when you play a good ball in. <laughs> There's no contact, anything from your team. It just goes all the way out of the box on the other side. Oh, that one's going to sneak by. A chance for a big shot for Pittman. Brings it back to the middle on the left foot, and she will capitalize. Less than five minutes in, Lady Warriors. Yeah, you see Addy, Addy, Addy very much wanted that on her left all the way around. It gets played to her right. She pulls it back, hits it onto her left, and just gets it high and hard over the keeper's head. Just felt like that was inevitable at that point. I mean, Warriors just kind of kept attacking, kept attacking, kept attacking, and you know, at some point one was going to go in. So they light up the Sutton Bank scoreboard for the first time. Pittman showing some nice composure right there. Getting it to the left foot and just drills it over the top of the keeper. Yeah, for Perkins, you got to show a little resiliency now. You know, they've not, not completed a lot of passes, not really gone forward effectively yet. Just kind of got to hang on the ball. Can't turn it over. And there it's back to Ontario already. Warriors playing a nice high line back defensively. Now they work it to the midfield. Here's Hattie. It was a smooth play out of the back by the Ontario back line there. Just didn't panic, didn't blast the ball away, just kept finding the open player. Hattie turned it over as she got forward there a little bit, but liked the composure on the back line. Here's maybe a chance for Perkins to go forward, create some opportunities. Number nine, definitely their best player, Sofia Rolofsky, had the game-winning goal, the golden goal in overtime to punch their ticket into districts for the first time ever. Leading score for the program. Closing in on 20 goals for the season, so they're going to need to try to find her as much as possible with their opportunities at the attacking end. Yeah, she wasn't too concerned with with making a pass there. Certainly, uh, eyes eyes were up and looking to just kind of go forward with the dribble there. Fast, skilled, strong player, but Ontario just had too many players back for that to be effective. Good ball in, handled nicely by the keeper there for Perkins. Second save so far for Sandusky Perkins. And a big booming punt here by Topanga Farlow. But it's one out of the air by Ontario. They're great with the 50-50 ball possession. As Pittman uncorks yet another and barely misses this one, Jesse. Yeah, I think Perkins got to do a little scouting report here. They know she wants it on her left, and she just, you know, just takes a big touch to get out to her left, creates some space. Good-looking opportunity again for Pittman. Nearly puts her second in the game with just a few minutes in. For Perkins, I think you got you got to realize right away that she is a, a dominant, strong, left-footed player. Certainly she can go to her right, but the preference is definitely the left. you got to take that away a little bit. Warriors attack it out of the air, but it's knocked out of bounds here by Ja'Kaya Trammell. It's this type of play. You know, Perkins just needs to kind of complete a pass or two, break up Ontario's rhythm. It just feels like Ontario has been attacking for nearly all seven minutes so far. You know, they've got a goal. They've had it two good opportunities so for Perkins you got to defend and then after you defend you got to keep the ball and there's gonna be another ball out of bounds back to Ontario right away it's gonna be a long night if you can't complete a pass out of the back and you're just gonna let Ontario run on you so easier said than done I know but it's kind of part of the game Sophia battling has it stripped away from her so the Warriors work it through Hattie in the middle she makes a run give and go back to her but overran just a little bit, so here's a chance perhaps for Rolofsky. Tough tackle there. Both players winning strong. Ontario comes away with the ball. Now Jukovic double teamed. Had it poked away. You know, that's one of the things as a freshman you may not be used to seeing is getting the double team. And you know, I think for the majority of her year, she's been able to kind of dribble through players and take players one-on-one. -on -one. But Perkins is sending that second defender over and I think you just pick your head up a little bit. You'll see you'll be able to slot it through and find really any of the attacking players you want. A couple turnovers by Hattie early in the game. Just trying to probably do too much with the ball. Slick filled conditions out here. It's been raining most of the afternoon in north central Ohio as we've got save number three taken in now by Topanga. Yeah. 
And Sophia certainly a big, strong, physical player. Just hasn't really got the ball to go forward. You're having to come back and try and win and turn the ball. And maybe just one time she's actually got a chance to go forward with a dribble there. Ontario's going to get that ball deep in their attacking third again. Let's see if they can connect on this cross. They're going to keep it on the ground. It looked like trying to hook up with Addie Pittman. Another kind of unforced Perkins turnover there. Just knocks it right out of bounds. So it's right back to Ontario even after a poor pass there. Perkins has dropped six players back, just kind of playing a good shot. Good save by the keeper there. Way to get down and you know, that's a, that's a tough ball to catch. She gets behind it, keeps it clean. No bobble, no deflection. It's a good save by the keeper. Yeah, Hattie Jugovic had a lot of heat behind this shot. You'll check it out on the Frito-Lay replay. Able to set it down, bring it to the right foot. A lot of gas behind it. There's a chance for Sophia. Checks back to get the ball, but it's one on two. Not much support there from Perkins as well. It's going to be... It's going to be a tough task for Sophia tonight. Going up, it's one of the best center backs in the state, plus the, with Spencer, Ja'Kai Trammell, and, and Marsh back there as well. It's, it's going to be one on four for the majority of the night, and that is going to be a tough, tough task. But you just got to you know, kind of be patient, wait for that opportunity to go forward, see if you can just kind of slip through one time. Man, but that, that Warrior defense is so solid. We talk so much about their, their strikers and their, you know, their kind of a opposing attack. But, man, they are solid defensively as well. Definitely work hand in hand, Jesse. The fact that they can control the ball so often and get it into the attacking third and kind of live down here at this end, it doesn't make the defense have to sit up, step up and make plays, but boy, this girl certainly can. She's been phenomenal. The other Addy on the team, Turnbaugh. Yeah, so you see the all 10 of the field players for Ontario probably in the attacking third there and just trying to keep that ball locked in. Perkins as well to kind of defend it and hit it out of that area. You know, I think that's one of the things that, you're right, makes them so good defensively is you know, a lot of teams, when they win the ball, they're just going to get it away and get it out of the area. But Ontario, when they win it, I mean, they're, they're really trying to look to keep the ball and find the next pass. And then, then you find, you know, the opposing teams out of position because you beat them with one pass and then another pass. you got to be careful dribbling out of the back. That, that's what will cost you a little bit. But good ball in. Yeah, bending back post. Nobody home. Didn't make a charge or at least a little bit too far for Addie Pittman to try to make a play on it. Yeah, that's, that's the one thing I think you're a little susceptible there when Ontario plays so high that if you try and take someone on one-on-one -on -one there and there's no one back supporting, if Perkins comes away on that challenge, they get a pretty good chance to go forward. But and she came away with the ball, put it in, just kind of curved out for a goal kick. Perkins has played that. It feels like they've played that ball probably ten times right there in front of their own bench. Maybe put some pennies on their, on their subs. Yeah, that's a, has not worked out so far on the far side of the field for them in terms of controlling... Good skill by Pittman. Splits two defenders. Great layoff. Ooh, tough touch in the middle by Ontario. Couldn't tell who that was necessarily. I think it was Elena Seif. Wasn't able to get a shot off. Uh, that composure again by Turnbull. To head up, collects it, keeps it. And again out here to Sasha as well. Bolikovsky to the middle. Turn set up to the outside. And a big rip. Over the top right corner. I'll tell you what, the, the buildup for that play was absolutely tremendous. They did everything right. Turnball wins the ball in the back, plays it out wide, plays it out wide again. A good ball in and just everything but that final attempt. But what a great possession by Ontario. Good look at Hattie there. They're almost averaging a shot per minute right now are the Lady Warriors. So they are living good down here in the attacking third and winning it out of the air yet again. Pittman surrounded by wide jerseys. Leaks it to the outside. Didn't have anybody on the wing. Yeah, Perkins has struggled on their goal kicks to really kind of get the second ball. Ontario's won the majority, or Perkins played out of bounds, and it's just led Ontario to constantly be in the attack for the first 13 minutes of the match. And this play is looking all too familiar. They play it wide, play it wide again, and then look to play it back in. It's defended nicely by Perkins there. Yeah, nice rip by Leanna Marinick. Now here's here's been a struggling point for Perkins. This is this goal kick has routinely gone to Ontario in the opening 13 minutes. So you you got to look. You got to just mix it up a little bit. And you see as you look at the field here, you see Perkins just kind of spread out all over the field. Even if you play it long, kind of into the the, the stand side, it's only one player, and so they do, and it's already four on one, and Ontario's already. Oh, well, she did grab the ball that time, so that helps out a little bit. But you got to play a little bit of the numbers game. So Perkins trying to respect that Ontario offense, dropping a lot of players back. Went for a long, quick free kick. Touch first by Sophia. 
But right back at him. Perkins should be able to control possession here in the midfield. Instant pressure, though, by Pittman. Takes it away, and here we go again. Hattie looking for some options. Got numbers building forward. Well done that time by the Pirate D. Not allowing a shot. Warriors got eight of them so far in the early going, but just one goal to show for it. Yeah, quite a few good opportunities, but you're right. Just just the one goal. There's a big ball in by Addy. It's going to be out for a goal kick. You know, I, I think Ontario gets so many opportunities. One of the things I worry about them as they continue to progress in the tournament is, is not taking care of the good opportunities. So you look at that, that's probably three or four that could have been goals if the ball is just a little bit different, a little bit off or somewhere else. And so those are opportunities that go back to Perkins. Now Perkins has returned the favor again with the goal kick. But for Ontario, I think you really got to capitalize on more of your chances. They're getting the looks they want. They're getting the ball deep into the attacking third. It's that final ball in. It's just been a little off to the keeper or just not quite back to him. We got our own Travis Brardy down on the sideline right now. As this ball comes in, set up nicely. Will we get a shot from Elena? It's going to dribble into the hands of the keeper, but he's saying that Larry Atkinson is telling his team the wind's really blowing hard in their face right now. They're stressing that they have to adapt to the conditions. They played in some wet and wild weather just last week, as did Perkins, actually in a snowstorm at Mansfield Senior, a game that we had live and free for you guys, where this young lady right here had the game winner. But it's just about making those subtle adjustments and playing to the atmosphere and the conditions out here. Lady Warriors do play on a grass surface for their home games, and obviously no stranger to playing here at Lexington where they come every single year for the districts. Absolutely. I'm trying to figure out which way the wind's blowing. It really depends on which corner flag you're looking at. They're all just kind of going their own direction. And That's really, a good point now that I look around, too. It's really, I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely wind. It's just I'm not sure which way it's actually blowing. It's... And one one corner or one yeah one corner flag's kind of uh, just standing quietly, and the other other two are blowing opposite. It's really a unique thing. Yukovic lays it back here. Warriors looking to reverse the field. Instead, they're going to turn it over in the middle. It was a good combination play by Perkins. Strung a couple passes together. Got out of the defensive third a little bit. A chance to go forward. That's about as deep into Warrior country as they have been so far tonight. Only possessed the ball three different times so far in enemy territory, and they've given it away within probably about the first three, four, five seconds. Just a good heads-up play. You saw both girls just kind of looking up, seeing where the space was. Played the easy ball, played the easy space. Now Bolikowski looked like she was kind of just playing to set up the corner kick. Be the third opportunity for the set piece here from this exact side for the Lady Warriors. You can see the water come off that ball. I think there's certain spots of the field it's it's pretty wet out there. I don't believe it's raining currently, at least from my vantage point. Certainly wind, certainly wet, soggy, muddy, a little bit of everything out there. Triggered in by Addy. Great looking ball. A couple of heads go flying just by the rock and it's going to go out of bounds for another goal kick. So close. Yeah, what an opportunity for the Warriors. Great ball in by Addie Pittman. He plays that left footed ball in, just a hard driven ball across, and Ontario sent the house, but no contact. Goes out for a goal kick on the other side. Played here by Ashlyn Beatty. And that'll leak out of bounds over on the far sideline. Ontario throw in on the way. Don't forget, we always love hearing from you, the fans out there. Be a part of the game. Get into the fan zone. Drop us a comment. Tell us all about how you're taking in tonight's contest live and free. It's soggy out here. It's a little bit cold. Stay at home. Get you a nice warm be beverage, whatever you want to do. Just uh, cuddle up in a blanket. Enjoy it. But tell us all about your experience and also cheer on your favorite teams and players in our fan zone. What I love about the, the live stream on tournament games is you got players and teams watching from all over the state for stuff like this. People want to see how does this game turn out. You know, and it's such a luxury to have a, a free live stream of a, a game and games later tonight of this quality. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, I, I have friends, coaches, other teams that I know will tune in just because they want to see how good these teams really are, how they play, who wins, and all sorts of those things. So in years past, that's not been a thing you could do. But now, now it is. And also Perkins is going forward. You see Sophia, just big, oh. strong presence. 
And they do get a shot here, Jesse. They're first in the match. Peyton Corso, the senior, coming up with one. And it looked like initially like we were going to get a one-on-one -on -one breakaway that time with Sophia Rolofsky. And a nice pressure at you the last what? second avoided it. You know, what I love about Sophia is her constant pressure. When that ball is anywhere near her, she's just applying pressure, trying to win the ball, just trying to flick it forward. You just see the speed of Hattie Yukovic. Uh, clever little ball, not quite hard enough to beat the first defender, though, but... Ontario is going to keep it, stay in the attacking third. And it will be knocked out for a throw in here on the near side. You know, one of these teams going home tonight, Jesse. Five number one seeds between D1, D2, and D3 lost last night, including Rocky River. So, Ontario, hey, you're on upset alert tonight. I know you're playing in your own backyard in, Rich in Richland County. I know you've been to the district championship so many years in a row. But you just never know on any given night. And I think that last breakaway for Perkins might have woke him up a little bit and let him, let him see, hey, we're, we're just up one. Yeah, you know, I, I think that, that could be true. I think one of the things you have to be careful of, kind of the mental side of tournaments, is you're always watching to see who wins, who loses. And certainly there were some key losses. You know, obviously with, with Madison, there's a good turn by Ontario again. Mm. With Madison coming out, who's won, I believe, what, four or five straight five district championships. Five straight. You, you, you start to think, okay, now, now it's our year, except for you still have to win this game. And then you're going to still have to win that district championship against either the likes of Lexington or Clear Fork, who will find out that opponent will be later tonight. And so you got to be careful you don't start looking ahead in situations like that when you hear, you know, Madison's out, Rocky River's out. You know, some of the teams that have been ranked in the top ten, you know, they, they get knocked out early. And you just start thinking, you start dreaming a little bit. you got to focus on that next game or you'll be one of those teams as well. Warriors have just been so dominant this season. I mentioned the 17 nothing scoring margin so far in tournament action and tons of shutouts on the year too, averaging over six goals per contest. I mean, this is one of the dominant teams in Division Two. That's why they're state ranked, of course, and one of the favorites to try to make a run to Columbus. But it all starts here in just one game at a time, trying to get by Perkins. As we're almost or we are actually just past the midway point here in Ontario for their nine shots. have just sunk one so far in the back. Will they get a second here? They will not. Yeah, it looks like Ontario maybe ran a design play, but not quite executed at a high level. And now pretty susceptible to the counterattack. Ontario steps up well to win. It was about to be two on one, but I believe it was Trammell who stepped up and made a big tackle there to get the ball going forward and not give up the breakaway. But something didn't, something didn't seem quite right on that corner kick. I saw girls kind of facing the wrong way, running the wrong way. I don't know if they're trying to organize a play or a set run, but it just did not quite pan out for the Warriors there. Saren Boss stepping up, trying to make a move. Splashes it, but it's going to be knocked out of there. And this is a chance for the counterattack, but Sophia, I mean, hopefully she brought her cape tonight, Jesse. If she's going to get a goal, she's going to have to dribble through a couple of defenders at some point here. Here's Hattie, sizing up the defender. Now she just turns one loose, and it's off of the crossbar. It's a good-looking shot there. I mean, just the confidence to be able to hit it from there. We know she's not afraid of the long shots, kind of high and in the middle, but she hits it, hits it clean. Keeper was not going to be able to make the save, but hits the post, and going to be another goal kick for Perkins. And I think we got to credit for all the misery that they've had here off of these goal kicks. They're defending pretty well. They're packing it in. They got three, four girls at all times that are at least making it tough on Ontario. They haven't had any clean looks yet on net. Yeah, I would say Ontario has played this about 90% correct, you know, just kind of keeping the ball. Keep, it's this final ball in that's been a good shot by Hattie. A lot of near misses, a lot of near goals, near attempts. Near doesn't get you into the next round, though. So I know that we got one at this point, but... You know, they're the type of team, I think, once they score, they usually start scoring in a flurry. But credit to Perkins. You know, they, they've, they're they hanging in the game. Almost got in on a breakaway a couple times now. They're, they're around. You know, they've allowed the game only to be 1-0 at this point. But those type of goal kicks just are not great. Yeah, that one pretty brutal, taken immediately by Anna Ward. But she's not able to get any leather onto the ball and try to aim it at net. So they turn Ontario away, at least for now. But Jugovic gets off a shot. It's loose. And Dovan by Topanga. Yeah, I don't think you mind that shot if you're Perkins. I mean, she goes to her left. She kind of hits a little bit of a, probably not her ideal shot. Keeper does well to keep it in front of her. 
I think Perkins is going to live with those shots outside the box and just kind of sit back and try not to give away the easy tap-in goals and force Ontario to some bigger goals here, but Ontario just knows how to get forward so quickly. And here they go again with Anna. Lost her footing, had it taken away. How will Perkins go about playing this one? Just a big ball, see if Sophia can't try to catch up. You know, one of the things I wondered is about the cardio of Sophia. I mean, I've watched her that she has covered a lot of ground whenever Perkins gets the ball remotely out of the back, and she just runs so hard so fast. Can she keep that up with 80 minutes? I'm not sure. Looks to be a little winded now, but sometimes getting the ball can kind of give you a little bit of juice. It's not a deep Perkins team. They'll only go to their bench maybe too deep as, whoa, that's a missile right on the radar. Hits the target. Yeah, just, just a good, clean build up there. I mean, it was just Hattie looking for that one-on-one -on -one play. Perkins didn't send the double team that time, and she just went at that first defender and just a clean, hard struck ball. Side netting there, you can see just take the one-on-one, -on -one, just a great touch to kind of set herself up. And what she does so well, beats the defender, but in beating the defender with that touch, she gets a, gets a great angle on the goal and just strikes it. Lady Warriors, 13th shot of the match. They do cash that one in, up 2-0 now with the freshman. Pittman and Jugovic, who we outlined in our pregame and told you all about them. And, I mean, if you're a soccer fan in North Central Ohio, you have heard about these ladies by now. But you see the great skill set, the character, too. I love talking to both of these young ladies. Got good heads on their shoulders. And so far, showing out. Got their team out in front. Absolutely. You can see there's a little bit of fatigue that's set in for Perkins. Ontario has been rotating two or three players in nearly every time the ball goes out. And, you know, they're, they're fresh. They're ready. Perkins has not done that, and you can just see they've been having to defend for about 25 minutes, I think, so far. They have seldom taken the ball out of their own end as the Warriors continue to dominate the time of possession. Spencer, I think she was trying to lay that one out wide and see if someone would make a break, and it goes off ahead of a Perkins player. So here comes a corner kick. Another score from around the area. Mansfield Christian boys are up 1-0 over woo -woo. Corey Rawson, who had a big upset over number one seed Huron to go on to the district semifinals. Yeah, that is the beauty of tournament soccer. One, and you're done. Big header out of the air by Hattie. Turned away at the last second. There were so many players inside the six of the box. I think all of Perkins and six of Ontario. Oh, my Lord. Mass chaos in there. Four <laughs> shots by Ontario. A couple deflected <laughs> off of bodies pandemonium inside the six you're right i mean look at this cluster that is unbelievable one, it's like two, a candy three, bag four, five, six perkins players right <laughs> in, the, in the middle of the six yard he's on the goal line rotating to get in front of the ball i like it just a mismatch of players out there but the pirates survive the onslaught kind of a weird looking trajectory obviously got deflected yeah Addie pittman again working hard to get on her left there just a little bit of a so a quick touch out, sets herself up, and they defend it nicely. Just get, you, know, you can't let her have that shot there. She already proved once that she can hit it. Now she'll be on the corner kick as well. It's a good ball in. Oh, right into the hands of the keeper. Looked like it might hit the back of Ontario. I couldn't tell who actually made the contact. But I think they kind of ducked the header and hit it with their back and right into the keeper's arms. Tenth shot on frame here for the Lady Warriors. You see the replay on Terry. Yeah, it kind of jumps up. That might have even hit Perkins last as well. I think it was Anna Ward. A little bit of a misplayed ball there by Ontario. Perkins misses the first touch. And that one just goes out of bounds. Not a great decision that time by Frank Father. Big throw in down the line. Still tracking inbounds. You know, one of the things we don't really count as statistics in, in these games are the throw-ins. Ontario has had probably at least 20 throw-ins in their attacking third. And on the Perkins throw-ins, when they've had opportunities, I think Ontario's won just about all of them. Yeah, certainly Ontario's just won just about every other ball. I mean, goal kicks, uh, and just, just kind of being in the right place, right time right now. There's good, good possession, good buildup. Good touch. And the shot, I mean, just look at that mess of girls in white uniforms there inside the box. Making it tough on Ontario, so that's why they've had to have most of their shots from distance, including this. Yeah, the Perkins keeper has done well. I mean, she's made some good saves. She's made the saves she's supposed to make. Obviously, she's getting up two goals in the process, but a lot of that's not necessarily on her. Here's going to be a chance for Sophia to go forward. Misplayed ball by Ontario in the back. 
Sophia's going to go one on four, one on three. Addy turn ball, just steps up, wins it big, and it's you see a little bit of that fatigue. It's so hard to cover three players in a tight area like that, and Perkins isn't willing to send more because they, they know they have to defend at the other end. Ball sent out wide here for Ward. Kind of mismeasured that pass, but misfire that time from Marinick. You know, one thing's you know, look, look at this Perkins roster, and this is not a uh, very senior-heavy team. This is a team that's only got, I think, I see three seniors, one sure. being the keeper who's done a nice job so far. But, you know, I think this is a team you, you could start to see in this position more often going up against the likes of Lex, Ontario, Clear Fork, Madison. You'll kind of get in the mix a little bit, and they could be here for a, you know, a year or two years, and if the coach does it right, could be more. I believe they graduated just three seniors last season from the team that won the first ever SBC championship for the Pirates. And, of course, they followed it up this season. So back-to-back -back league champs. And a diving save again for Topanga Farlow. I feel like she ran in and turned her back again and kind of hit it with the back. You can see the ball come in here. It's a good ball in. See her make a good run in. And, yeah. You know, Ontario just seems to shy away from the headers. Now, that's a tough ball to head. It's cold. I, I get that. But that's probably the second or third one. I've seen him kind of turn away from a header in the box and be able to you know, force the keeper into a tougher save than what she's having to do right now. Good touch, though. This one pushed outside by Allison Howard. Now deflected. And Rolofsky going to send it out to the wing, and no play is going to be made out there by Peyton Corso. Yeah, Sophia tracking all the way back there. I mean, she's back defending in her own defensive third, and that's such a long sprint when you're uh, when you're the target player, and you have to do what you have to do. But when you have to kind of defend in your attacking third, and you get the ball, and it's basically it's a 70-yard sprint going against four Ontario back. I mean, that is not an easy transition. So that's, that's a tough way to play, but obviously you've got to respect the attacking ability of Ontario. Quick peek at our fan zone. Keep them coming, people. We need those comments on the YouTube and the Facebook. Make you a part of the game. And where are you at, Perkins fans? This could be the last game of the season for you Pirates. Make sure that you get the most out of watching today's competition. Good buildup by Hattie there again. Just kind of gets that ball off her foot a little bit. Again, that, that right touch to beat the defender, but not only beat the defender, to give yourself a good angle at the shot there and just misses wide. And Ontario's got some good looks. Still two goals to show for it. You, you kind of expect more with the way the game has gone, but 2-0 is 2-0. Quick look at who's been out here on the field for basically the entire duration of the match for the Lady Pirates, who have not dove into their bench very much so far. I think maybe just one or two subs really all I can remember, kind of rotating a few players around. Good movement by Ontario, kind of rotating that ball back out. A little bit of a miscommunication there on that final play, but Perkins has dropped all of them players back, so when the ball was cleared, it still is just time for Ontario to kind of reset, re-engage. This might be a chance that's going to put Sophia in. It's just going to be a race between Sophia and Addy, but Addy got the angle right, got the run right, was able to keep the ball. And she's got the more energy, of course. You can tell out there, Sophia, as you mentioned, I mean, she's tracking all over the place, having to come back and defend, and Addy Turnbaugh, Taking her time, you know, she, she's getting to do a lot of walking, hanging out at midfield. So when, when she's having her opportunities, it's always a dead sprint, 100% going after it. Yeah, you see Ontario, you know, I like the way they play with kind of this wing back style where those outside backs are not afraid to go up. But Kai Trump just ball a little bit, kicks at that ball a little bit, and but just I think you want to go back post and kind of go long there and don't really have a chance. Make a decision. Now she comes in the midfield, but it's going to be a turnover right at the feet of Howard. Shoots that one out wide, and it's going to be too far. Throwing coming up for the Pirates deep in their own territory. Just 2 nothing Ontario. Seven and a half minutes to go here. What's well, been a pretty exciting opening half. Lady Warriors have basically been living right down at this part of the field. Good run by Trammell to get forward again and see what kind of ball she plays in here. 
A hard driven ball, but a uh, clever idea, but not quite to her feet, though. On a ward with a little turn in the box, just a little heavy, goes right to the keeper again. Topanga has definitely held her own 12 shutouts on the season. That is a school record. That was set by Faith Foltz just last year. So stepping in as a senior, getting her first opportunity at the varsity game and definitely making the most of it so far this year. Got a couple of Pirates set to check in. See if perhaps they spell out Rolofsky. Give her a, a break, a little breather. There's Hattie Pittman dropping back to receive the ball there and find some space with Hattie. Another play wide. Hattie elected to try and keep it herself, but drew about three Perkins defenders there. Cleared right to Trammell, though. Just good confidence by Hattie not, not to play in the pressure, not to force anything. Bit of a rough ball out by Spencer. It's going to be Ontario's throw in, so those two subs are going to have to wait for their opportunity. Footing looks like it can be tough in certain spots of the field out here, of course, yeah, as right. Ward had a, a rough time trying to make that turn. Yeah, that's about the third player I've seen kind of have that uh, no contact fall there, just kind of slips and cuts and goes down. It's a good ball by uh, Tramo. I like that one, just kind of lofts it and puts it into the back post, sees if something can happen. Perkins comes away with the ball. Let's see if they can win the second one here. Looks like the ball's going to trail out of bounds over on the far side. So Ontario, they had a sub also waiting to check in. Jakaya Trammell, who just played some great minutes, is going to get a quick rest. And we'll get to see Caitlin Frankfather back into the action here for the Pirates. ball has just kind of been in this position the majority of the game just kind of in that corner for the Ontario and just in their attacking third but it's struggling to get that, that ball in normally what they've done so well in that on Ontario history as we've talked about you know such talented players and teams that they can play that ball across and just be able to finish the, the ball in has not been great and the finish has not been quite what we're used to seeing out of Ontario we'll see if the, maybe the coaches have a few uh, a few words of encouragement from at halftime to kind of clean some of that up but Certainly not quite the same caliber of ball in. I know the wind plays in that a little bit. Sure. But also I think maybe the cold and just the willingness to go hit that ball with your head. Sometimes that, uh, that's not always the most pleasant feeling. But you do get goals that way. As you look at the trees over on the far side of the field, definitely the wind picking up a little bit out there right now on the playing surface. And aside from the touch line, turns it into the box. And it's taken out of the air here yet again by Ontario. I mean, these 50-50 balls are more like 95-5 right now for the kids that are sporting the gray jerseys. Good choice there. You see Ontario, they're just moving the ball so effectively, going from that middle third to the attacking third. Good touch by Addy. All right at the keeper, though. I'd like to have that one back. The buildup was clean. Everything was smooth. It's been that 90%, right? The, they win the ball. They get their head up. They're getting the attack. But just the final ball. Coming off those possessions is just not quite the shots they want or the style of shot or even in that case, the placement of the shot. Perkins, Anyone? Go ahead. Perkins was able to finally win a goal kicking out to go forward a little bit, but. Progress, so, Jesse. But went into a double team because they only, they only send a couple players and it's a little bit of that chess match where the only attack with a couple, Ontario can with defend with whoever they need to. The Warriors are winning up here offensively with about two fewer players in the mix than Perkins has, as that was set up very well just outside the six. Now Hattie, and knocked out of there by the Pirates, who have really been packing it in tight. It's a good cut there. Let's see if she looks to go to goal. She elects to keep it. She ends up chasing her own touch, maybe a bit of a deflection off their touch, but... Pittman looked like she was able to get a touch on it. Couldn't angle it towards frame. That one will be, but it's going to be out of bounds off the shot from Bulakowski. You know, I don't know if this is a specific style thing or just the way the game has been played or they're, they're fearful of that, that Perkins wall, but 
typically you see Ontario get down to the end line and look to play a ball across that each goes above and beyond the keeper or just just kind of inside the six away from the keeper. But the majority of the balls they play in the box tonight have been right around the corner of the 18 and just kind of play them higher and away, which really allows that, that Perkins wall to just kind of stay in front. And you got to draw some of that wall out and just be a little more composed there in the attacking third. Certainly they're getting shots. They're getting opportunities, so it's not necessarily anything wrong. I think more of a style thing here is you just kind of got to bring that wall out, be a little more patient, get the ball in you want. If you can't find the ball from this angle here, you just kind of work it back, try again. I'd like to see him get a little bit deeper and play this ball in just away from the perk. Yeah, there it is again, kind of cutting it back away from, you know, momentum going forward, kind of playing behind defenders a little bit. So Rolofsky got the ball at her feet. Doesn't last for very long. A few touches. Warriors converge. And that's kind of been the story so far. Yeah, she is a big, tough player. I mean, just she's made a couple hard tackles, just trying to do what she can to keep the ball. And obviously has some pace on her and some ability and not afraid to go into a tackle hard. Having to do a lot of work tonight. You can see down from the field level, when really playing havoc on Ontario shots, blowing towards the benches is what our Travis Berardi is saying down there, hanging out at midfield over on the far side. There you see that composure again by Ontario just to keep the ball here again, smooth, building the ball up the field. Good give and go. What will the Warriors get out of it? They got a cross and handled by Topenga. She might have stepped out of bounds with the ball there. Certainly Ontario had some words of encouragement for the referee. Couldn't quite tell on my vantage point if it was if she made the save out of bounds and kind of touched it. Oh, there it is again. Boy, these, these corner kicks have been a great ball coming in from Maddie, but just that's probably the third one. Just mistimed, missed, misheaded, or mismatched, and no goal from it. So the score remains just 2-0 in favor of the Lady Warriors, the top seed on top. They've definitely been dominant, but not a whole lot of scoring to show for it. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, I'm going to give you all the stats that you need to hear. Me and Jesse will break down what we saw through the first 40 minutes of action. We'll take a look at the comments section and get you ready for half number two with live. It's free and it's only right here on the OH Report. We'll be right back. and turn up every moment with Frito-Lay Variety Packs. Instead of paying for some big-name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa.
Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. to the Mechanics Bank Halftime Report. I'm Brian Skronsky alongside Jesse Ryder. And it's just 2-0 right now, Jesse, despite, I would say, some pretty supreme domination by Ontario. But at the same time, give some love to that Perkins defense. They're being pretty stout. Uh, absolutely. It's been a dominant 2-0 game. But uh, you look at the stats, you think, oh, it's, it's only two they've given up. So it's kind of an interesting game so far. And in tournament games, you know, I think what we talked about with Perkins, you just want to have a chance at the end of the game to give yourself a chance at the game, you know, and so you just you play it tight, you kind of keep the game close, try and defend, 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 and when you go against a team like Ontario, they're they're so smooth with the ball, so just they have this ability to be able to create shots from anywhere and just different styles of shots, and so you see a lot of that tonight. I think this is not not the smoothest uh, attacking third I've seen from Ontario, uh, but certainly Perkins has kind of kind of done what they've been asked to do of just trying to defend and keep the ball out of the back of the net and just keep defending at a high level. Let's show you kind of the tournament picture here, Jesse. We're going to bring up the bracket for all you folks at home. So, of course, this is the first of two matches that we're going to have live and free tonight on the OH Report. The second one, I think, is going to be a dynamite affair. Lexington playing at home against Clear Fork, the number two and three seeds. And you look at how they got here. I mean, 10 nothing win for Ontario against Columbian. Perkins needed overtime to knock off Mansfield senior Madison. The five-time defending district champion taken out of tournament play by Lex. And then Clear Fork, no problem with Norwalk getting into tonight's competition. And we usually have bare minimum three Richland County teams in this final four of the district. Same exact scenario again, Jesse. I mean, it's just great soccer down here in this part of the state. Yeah, this was the section we've kind of had circled all season long. I mean, there's just so many talented teams. You know, obviously, you know what Madison has done. We know the history that they have. Uh, Ontario would kind of felt like has always been there, but just ran into this, this juggernaut called Madison for the past couple of years. But then, oh yeah, you have Clear Fork, who's probably ranked in the top 10. Lexington, who's really been coming along at the end of the season. And so it's been, this is kind of that, that moment, right? This, this, this second game specifically, you know, per Perkins has done their job and kind of, you know, they did what they needed to do to get here. I was really wanting Mansfield Senior to kind of get into this level of game, this opportunity of a, you know, just a great learning experience. I don't think they're quite at the level of Ontario. But I think they've got some talent there, and I think this is a, this is a good place for them to be. So, you know, Perkins did the job, won in overtime to get here. 
and now you, you go up against Ontario. But looking at the other side, I mean, that's that's the game everybody wants. Lex Clear Fork, you knew it was going to be Lex Clear Fork or Madison Clear Fork. I mean, those you knew that's how the bracket was going to play out in one of those ways. And so it gets to be uh, quite a fun night for us. We get to call it here. It's at Lexington. Maybe a little bit of advantage for maybe uh, a little bit of a higher seed, but it's just you know Lex has this great facility. They take such good care of their stuff, and so we have all of that here. All right, now we're going to throw it down to the sideline. We've got Travis standing by with longtime Ontario coach Larry Atkinson. What's up, guys? All right, coach. Uh, first off, defensively, Perkins only one good offensive chance. You guys have done a good job keeping the ball in your own zone. Yes, we have. We've possessed the ball. Um, we've challenged their, their big girls pretty pretty effectively. We just can't get too lazy back there because they do have speed and, and we can't let them get by us. And then offensively, you, you got two in the back of the net. I know you want the ball more towards the middle of the field on the offensive end. What do you guys need to do you know, in the second half, maybe get a couple more goals in the net? Just need to be more patient. I mean, we're rushing everything. We're not finding the keeper. We're not putting it away from her. I mean, we've kicked so many balls to her. It's just, you know, if, if we get it out wide and we're going to cross it, everybody's congregating to the outside where the ball is instead of holding their positions and being in the middle where they can do something with it when they trap it. All right, good luck in the second half, Coach. Thanks. Back up to you, Ski and Jesse, for the second half. All right, thank you, guys. Appreciate Larry giving us the time here at the half. And let's go ahead and dive into those halftime stats presented by Mechanics Bank. And you can't get much more dominant than that, Jesse. 22 shots for Ontario, just one for Perkins. And I think maybe even the 80-20 possession, a little generous. It felt like Ontario had the ball at their feet just about the entire half. Uh, absolutely. You see the domination in the stats outside of the scoreline, really. I mean, 2-0 dominant in the sense that Ontario hasn't really given up a, a, that much but do you expect them when you see 22 shots to one 15 shots on goal to one mm -hmm. you know 80 to 20 you expect that scoreline to be a little bit uh, bigger separation but you know, credit to Perkins you know I, I, yeah. I look back at that play where that ball was bouncing around in the goal and if it goes in at 3 half you just feel like okay this game's pretty much over Ontario's just gonna be able to kind of score where they want but keeping it at 2-0, Perkins is kind of that rotating wall back there. The keeper was there, had six other defenders inside the six, just keeping the ball out of the back of the net. And that's the mentality, just defend, defend, defend. And when do you get a chance? Can we get it up to Sophia? And can she maybe just create something, get a foul, get a good chance, get a good opportunity? And, and see if you can get something out of it. And that's definitely what it's going to have to be in terms of their game plan and their strategy and how Ontario is playing them is they're just going to need to have Rolofsky do something that is just extraordinary. She's going to have to go at a couple of defenders, make a big play, and if she can, it could totally change the dynamic of this game because the Pirates, far from being sunk here in Richland County, backs to the wall a little bit, of course, with as dominant as Ontario has played, but it's still just a two goals to none deficit, and they are very much capable of getting an early score here and trying to flip the entire script. Uh, but they ain't walked the plank just yet, Jesse. Mm, pirate puns. You don't get to use a lot of them. Throughout right. Not a lot of pirate teams around the Richmond County area. So nice to have Perkins here and all, really the, all the pirate puns. <laughs> ah, yeah, that is the best part about the postseason, just getting to see some of the different teams from around the state and their unique mascots. But it, it's just tough to compete with, with a pirate because there's so much low-hanging fruit out there. And uh, clearly, I'm reaching for all of it, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, don't yeah, care. Yeah. Well, the thing about pirates is it's easy to grab the low-hanging fruit with the hook. So mm -hmm. it's yeah, hey, an yeah. easy, easy grab. Arr. So the second half is kicked off. Yeah, here underway here. <laughs> so, you know, Ontario has started with a kickoff. And not quite as smooth as possessions they had in the first. I mean, I just I liked how they played that first half. The eyes were up. They were finding the player, finding the space. Not a lot of turnovers. And most of the time when that ball went to Perkins, it was because Ontario missed a shot or missed an opportunity. And that's that's a, a good good result until you're not scoring. Then it's kind of a frustrating result. And so you love your, for your possession to result in shots. You really love for your possession to result in goals. And that's what Ontario kind of needs to find in this next round. They've got a good opportunity right here. Two quality saves by Topanga. Man, this lady's doing her thing. Yeah, Addie Pittman, uh, it's probably her second one. I think just kind of hitting the ball there. Really no need to go to the front post. Just kind of kicks at it. You go, you go back post every time, though, and you'll be getting your name in there for the second goal of the night for herself. But just kind of kicked forward at it. Keeper was right there, right position. Makes another save again. Ontario short corner. A little two-on-one game. Got it. Cashed in, big shot right there from Yugovic. And it looked like perhaps Topanga 
Just didn't have a great read on where that ball was coming from. But Ontario, they're crafty, Jesse, off these set pieces. They've been really close that time. They go with the short one, and it works out. Yeah, Addy and Hattie connection here. Addy just does well to draw that first defender. And here's what you have to do if you're Perton. You have to send a second player, especially when you have the players of, you know, Addy Pittman and Hattie Yukovic out there. You can't leave a defender out there to go two on one. They're going to explode it every time. And they do just that, and Hattie gets the uh, second goal of the night. Good assist by Addy. They ran that corner perfectly. Jesse, you've been around soccer for longer than, I mean, just about anybody in the area here. And in terms of just being connected and knowing a lot of these teams around here at the girls' game, do you ever remember a time where two freshmen on the same team were this good, this dynamic, where obviously Ontario, I mean, their state ranked up in the top five, and their two best players undeniably are ninth graders? Ooh, I, that's a great question. I will say I, I don't remember – Two prolific goal scorers. There's another one again wow. for Addy Pittman, right on cue. And now, now Ontario's kind of figured it out a little bit here. Um, you, you know, I, I think Ontario, to build up here, has been exactly what they needed. You know, they start the half, and just probably what Coach Atkins had told him on hat. Listen, you got to finish your chances. We have so many chances to only have two goals. It's just kind of that, that execution in the, in the final play of the game, right? The 90% of what they did in the first half was right. Their buildup was good. Their possession was good. It's that, that last bar, that last shot, or that last attempt was just not quite to the same level. And then the second half, we're two minutes in, it's already two more goals. So quite the dream start for Ontario. Yeah, no question. And it is those two ninth graders that are stirring up the drink out here, making it happen for the Warriors when they get on offense. Just so crafty, so gifted. A lot of poise, too, for some youngsters. Absolutely. You know, going back to your question, I don't, I cannot remember two prolific scores as freshmen. I can remember you know, players who certainly were key contributors, key players, but these two girls, I mean, they just came in and just started scoring goals like crazy. I will say, I think Addie Turnbull might be the best on the team, though. I mean, she's just, in a game like this, you don't realize how good Addie Turnbull is because she's, she's maybe been tested one time. But she is a smooth player, smart defender, smart player. That's nothing to discredit the other girls. I just think she, she's a veteran. And I think Addie and Hattie still watch them. They're still learning. They still have some. Here's that short corner again. I, I, oh, a little bit of deception. I thought she hit it already. But there we go. Back at it. Two on one. Perkins still sends one defender. Same play. Deja vu. Nearly same result. Boy, someone might want to text the Perkins coach, send a second defender out there. It's going to keep happening all night long. Well, I did just get a text from Travis Berardi over on the sideline hanging out with Larry and Greg Atkinson. And on those first two goals, it was exactly how they drew it up. And you don't see Larry give a lot of praise in terms of like smiling and being genuinely happy. But that's what Travis said is that they liked what they saw. They powered through the middle for the second goal and off that short corner kick. I mean, they just almost executed it flawlessly again. Yeah, Ontario's so dangerous on the free kicks. I mean, Addy had been putting some great corner kicks in. They just weren't connecting on the other end. So these short corners now, when you start doing that, now you draw out two defenders. So if Addy elects to play it long, You've got more defenders out, so I, I like I like the mix up there of trying to you know keep defenders guessing. Now let's see, did Perkins learn their lesson? Did Perkins learn their lesson here about sending a second defender over to go short corners? I think it takes too long to get Perkins a message in a bottle, Jesse. That, that's the problem out there trying to get the Pirates a message. They, they're not going to get it in time. Uh, Ontario went long with this corner <laughs> kick anyway, so see. <laughs> oh, the pirate puns. I need to yeah. pick up Perkins for the for the regular season, just for the pirate puns. I think you're right. It'd be worth a, a few trips up to Sandusky. Perkins fans, I need to know where to eat in Sandusky area, specifically around the Perkins area. Well, I can tell you this: that there's a restaurant called Berardi's up there by Cedar Point that uh, Travis's uh, distant family owns. Oh my! Yeah, he, he took me once. Was it good? We didn't get a discount. That's what oh, I remember. You didn't get a discount? That's, that's all I remember. His family owns it, and he paid full price? I, b I believe so. Oh my so words. there's not a lot of perks <laughs> of having a Berardi on the crew. <laughs> so when he does do something good, we, we try to give him as many ego pats on the back as we can. And, oh, right on cue, he's sending me another text. Let's see. He <laughs> says he had to pay more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, right? Ontario just keeps attacking here. Perkins struggling to defend. They're all bunched up in the middle, and... Ontario does well. Just kind of spread the game out here. Be patient. There it is again. Addy, good touch. Wow. Hat trick time. Right at the keeper. Addy, got to go back post. It's a tapping goal for anybody else, though. I love the buildup, though. Again, uh, the buildup from Ontario. I mean, good patience, good composure. Addy gets in there on the on the give and go. Good opportunity for Addy there. Addy could be looking at like a five goal night, and she's put a couple at the keeper. Some shots he'd like to have back. I no mean, question. She still has two, so it's not like it's a, a terrible thing. But she's got a long way to go here, Jesse. 
And especially the way Ontario is playing right now is this one just murked from deep. Are you seeing more Ontario and their confidence level growing? Or after that first goal, do you feel like kind of some of the adrenaline level for Perkins they lost some of their flow. Yeah, I think it tactically it looks like Perkins sent another player forward. You know, I, I realize you're trying to, you're you know you're you're trying to get some goals, but here's that that chess match we talk about is if you send more players forward, you have less players in the back, and Ontario's the type of team that if they get more time and space, they're they're going to make you pay. So it's just kind of which which do you prefer, getting no shots off or getting more goals on? And so. Perkins, not, I mean, it's it's the last game of the season if you don't score, so they got to send some players forward, got to try and attack, and and doing so, Ontario's kind of exploited some of that space a little bit. Excellent triangle and ball movement here by Ontario. Textbook stuff to get into the attack. Where will they go with it? Got options. Everyone seemingly brimming with confidence right now. It's a good ball, good choice, big shot though. I like the movement. Ontario's just playing smooth right now. The ball movement's been better. A little confident. You can see there's a little bit of swagger. I think the, I think the longer that game stayed 2-0, Ontario just you, you start doubting yourself, start questioning yourself, or questioning yourself, and you know, you're trying to push for that third goal, but you gotta you gotta be careful you don't give up a counterattack. And sure. that third goal is huge. I think it just kind of puts the game away, and then shortly after that, the fourth, and now it's basically going to be watching Ontario try and score again here, probably for the remainder of the match. The entire duration of the second half has been played down here at this end. As that knocked out, at least for now, by Perkins. And they've just got nobody up top. I mean, everybody is back in a defensive position right now for the kids in white. Yeah, certainly Ontario, I mean, it, it's no disrespect for Perkins the way we talk about him. It's Ontario is just another level. They're a, a state-ranked team for a reason, a team with a rich history, tremendous players. It's just a, a different level for them right now. You know, we look at Perkins' roster. I mean, they got some young players here. This is it's a great learning experience. This is a team that could be back in this situation, hopefully back and better. And you know, you kind of want to build for the next year as well. Not a whole lot of heat there from Allison Howard. Kept it low. Just couldn't drive this one back post. She had the right idea. Just didn't strike it very well, and that'll go down into the seventh shot already for the Lady Warriors here in the second half. Five of them have hit the mark. Certainly already better statistics in the first half for Ontario. Of, you know, five shots on goal resulting in two goals. I think they had 15 in the first half that resulted in two goals. So, you know, but the chances they're creating, the goals they're scoring, I mean, it's, it's a much better Ontario team from half to half here. Not that they were bad the first half. It's just they weren't quite to their level. And, you know, credit to Ontario. They're a young team as well. You know, we, we talked about some of that, that freshman and obviously they're impact players, but there's still a lot to learn in this game. And so whether you're, a freshman or not, he plays like that where it's just a bit of a miscommunication, uh, a misread of your of your teammates of whether going checking two or going wide. You know, just turnovers, plays like that, that can be uh, that can cost you sometimes. Well done to win it out of the air though by Ontario, as they've done so routinely throughout the duration of this match. Rolovsky just gonna drive one deep into the Warriors' end. I can see Perkins looks like attacking with three three attacking players now, and maybe Sophia even on the left wing rather than the middle, just trying to get a threat forward, see if they can get something going. Boy, it looks like that wind is picked up too. Big time. Yeah, from the start of the match until now, I mean, it was probably about 15 minutes remaining in that opening half that I really noticed that the wind was coming through. Big branches on the far side of the field were starting to get moved around. That's a good touch, good ball. Oh, the final ball to Jim. Oh, no. I like the build-up again by Ontario. I mean, that's the right play all the way around. Just really no swing on it, though, from Howard, who's a little bit hesitant with the yeah. shot attempt. Maybe just a step behind the ball, kind of to step into it to hit it rather than just being right there lined up with it. Cross and field goes the Warriors, and it's going to chase Bulakovsky out. Looking for a big cross. She'll hit one. And now Spencer drills it too tall. It's a dream ball there. I mean, just kind of rolling, bouncing right at the goal. You just step into it. you got to swing into it, and she kind of swings up at it rather than through it. That's a tough ball to be disciplined on, but if you can kind of hit it with your laces going towards the goal and not up and away from it, it's, uh, it'll be a clean hit. So off the goal kick here, they're going to play it tight, and it's going to be a quick turnover. Jukovic sets it up in the middle. Pittman sets for the left foot. 
And a nice save by Topanga. She's going to get tested again, though. Can't get this one. Lady Warriors on fire here in the second half as McManus adds yet another. Yeah, three goals, 11 minutes. It's a dream start in the second half for the Warriors here. Addie Pittman with another great look on goal. Forces the keeper into a tough save. Hits it too hard for the keeper to catch. And good composure to strike this right onto the back line here. Steps into it. Perkins a little late to kind of cover. They've been chasing all game. It's a big goal for Ontario. And another youngster too, Jesse. All the scoring so far by the Lady Warriors. Freshman with four, now a sophomore. Chipping in with the fifth. It'll be interesting to see what Ontario, you know, is is like in years to come. Obviously, they've got some youth on the squad here. You know, they'll lose a couple of key players, but they're going to be able to score goals in a flurry over the next couple of years. So they'll see what that looks like. Nine shots by Ontario in the second half. Puts their total over 30 in the contest. Perkins, just one so far. Yeah, looking at this Ontario roster, I'm realizing there's only three seniors on the team. Obviously, one of them is you know Addie Turnbull, Taylor Mullins, who uh, you know I'm not sure if she's been back. I believe she's back from a, an ACL injury, but hasn't played much. It's kind of the backup keeper role, and then uh, Villamont as well. So just three three seniors to look to replace. So this is an Ontario team. Certainly in years to come, they're going to be uh, a pretty impressive team. You know, obviously, got to replace a keeper and. A keeper to a degree because Sarah Hendricks is in there now. I but could play keeper for this team right <laughs> now, Jesse. This, yeah, the way <laughs> you know what I mean? Game has gone. I think a lot of people could play keeper tonight. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's what we do talk a lot about the Ontario attack, but defensively, you know, part of the Ontario attack is not getting beat and then not losing the ball. So you see a play like this here, it, you know, it's not forced, it's not kicked, it, it's possessed, and now Ontario's back in the attack because of this, the defensive uh, ability and decision making there. Yeah, the back line with. Spencer, who's getting up into the attacking third here, Trammell, and then obviously we talked about Turnbaugh, what she's able to do. The, those three are awesome, and they have great continuity with one another, exactly like you said. A lot of defensive units, they just come up and they'll boom the ball, they'll knock it out of bounds, they'll just try to shut down the attack, force a throw in. These kids are so crafty with it, and we know Turnbaugh early in her career was one of the top goal scorers for Ontario. She's elected to be a defender for, for the betterment of the team with all these stud freshmen and sophomores they have up top, so... From top to bottom, I mean, this this is a championship contender, I think, in, in the state of Ohio in Division Two this season. I'm not sure what really ranks among the top and what they can run into at the regional round or even the states, but this is definitely the, the best team here at this district. Absolutely. You know, I, I've seen teams from around the state. There's obviously Granville's one of the top teams in the state. I think Copley's up there as well. So, I mean, there there's some teams that are going to be a little more seasoned than this Ontario team, but, I mean, the ability that, that they can score and how they possess the ball – it allows you to be in games. And so at this level, there's two things that kind of let you be in games. One, if you can defend at a high level, you know, I think of a team like the Mansfield Christian Boys, they just defend at a high level. They're not going to score a ton of goals, but they're going to be in about every game because they're really tough to score on. So it allows them to stay in games, even against you know opponents who might have a, a higher individual skill set, they're going to stay in because they defend at a high level. What Ontario does, though, is they, they don't turn the ball over a ton. And so it's just constant. If, if your possessions are routinely being ended by shots, that is a great statistic and a great way to play. Obviously, you know, oh, good build up, good shake save by the and keeper. bake. But that's it. I mean, so there's the end of possession, and it, you know, results in a good shot on goal. So if that's how you give up possession and you're not giving up counterattacks all the time, that, that allows you to stay in a lot of games. And so you, you see it, and it turns into domination when teams can't get the ball, can't complete passes. And that's what we see tonight. Perkins has just not been able to do really much of anything because Ontario doesn't give the ball away that much. Off the cross here, Lady Warriors, I mean, just hops from one player to the next. McManus turns, sets it up. Almost had the assist, charging in from the back post. And, man, have they created a lot of offense here in the second half and some quality offense, too. And our little mole over there on the sideline, Travis, says that they're, they're just trying to aim for the corners here in the second half of the goal and try to not put it on the keeper. But, uh, I mean, that's kind of soccer 101, Jesse, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? I still can't get past the fact that you didn't get a discount at his family's restaurant. <laughs> We're going to have to bring that up for sure. Hey, there's a good look at Beraldo over on the sideline. <laughs> S sporting the swag. Where is Beraldo? Found him. 
No, he, he doesn't move much. We'll see. It's kind of cold to just have a hoodie on. I like his hoodie, but it's kind of cold for just the hoodie. Oh, and we've got some, some fresh paint on some hoodies coming through soon, Jesse, that I know that you're going to be excited about. Deal. Got a special one just for you. You're going to have one of a kind hoodie. Oh, deal. It is hoodie season, too. It is my favorite of the hoodie seasons, would be when it's time to actually wear the hoodies. Yeah, no joke. I'm, I'm not really a hoodie guy, but. What? It feels like every time a hoodie is made for me with the OH Report swag, it's get, it gets given away to somebody really? else before oh, I get a chance to don it. So uh, what what is that like? Oh, and our producer, Adam, too. But you at least – Adam at least starts with it in his possession, and then he chooses to give them away. It's usually, oh, here you go, hon, and then, oh, actually, we, we need this for so-and-so. So <laughs> I just never get my Hoodies turn. and polos. That's about all I wear, hoodies and polos. It's, it's good look. It's been a good look for Ontario here in the second half. I mean, this I, I thought that they were very dominant in the first half, despite just the two goal to nothing differential. They've they've taken it up a notch here. Absolutely. And you could see, you know, Perkins is kind of fatigued out of the game a little bit. You know, they don't quite have the the defensive wall they did earlier. They put another player up and you know the score line's a little bit different. Of course the game's a little bit different now. And so Ontario's gonna have some subs and it is in fact gonna be Taylor Mullins checking into the game, senior goalkeeper who I, I'm pretty sure is returning from a ACL injury not too long ago. I mean, she doesn't probably have to do much, so why not? She does got a big brace on that right leg. Yeah, watching her run out there, I don't think she's probably 100%. I mean, <laughs> she I, I, looks I don't about know 50. much. There's a good good attempt there. Wow. Ontario finally got it connected on the header, but right at the keeper again. That what? is the 20th save by my count, Jesse, by Topango Farlow. So she's at least uh, she, she's trying to do her part here, despite the 5 nothing goal margin that she's in. Definitely played pretty well in stretches so far tonight. Yeah, sir. I mean, she's she's made a lot of good saves. She's she's caught balls cleanly that have been you know well struck, and it's just been the the amount that she's had to save. And then you know, especially in the second half, where Ontario is getting a lot of their shots off. I mean, forcing her into some some tough saves or tough angles, and Ontario's been able to capitalize there. Big throw in coming from Trammell. Takes a skip. And this one volleyed up. No one timer right there. Almost worked out perfectly. And Lila Stevens trying to get a big shot off. And here will come one back post. Ontario sending the house up there again to send in that, that outside back, that wing back. It's a lot of fun. In a game like this, being a wing back is a dream because you just get to go forward, cross balls in, and you get somebody on the other side, you can cross the ball, and you get a chance to score. Sometimes the wing backs have to actually play. You know, back and defend, but this setting, you just get to go forward and have some fun. Addie Turnbull's the lone Ontario player with in the middle of the third right now. <laughs> yeah, well, what a lonely time to be a keeper for Ontario. Well, it's cold, too. It's cold and windy. you got to have a hat on or something back there. You almost might want to give yourself, like, a push-up challenge or something. You know, keep an eye. I'm not just saying be totally disrespectful, but you got to stay warm somehow out here. I just, you'd have to have, like, some ear coverings or something. That wind, that'll, mm. that'll get you. I'm not saying wear, like, a baseball cap been seeing that more and more recently i don't know like the, the earmuffs on the baseball hat no 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 just just the baseball hat from the keepers hmm. playing with that on it it's an interesting look i don't know i didn't even know that was allowed what yeah what? of all the rules you think i mean you have like a hard bill on a hat you'd think it would not be allowed but it is oh there's a oh, no clearance another corner kick for ontario here addy Pittman's heading over so she'll take this one long I like these short corners on, on Ontario has been running. I mean, just so sweet. If you only send one defender, it's a dream matchup. It's two on one. It's like a breakaway drill. Ontario executed one to perfection and nearly the second as well. They'll drive it in here, bending off the head. And Trammell shot deflected. And Topanga finally comes over and she'll scoop it up. Pirates have. Definitely struggled winning off of those punts. And here's Pittman again. That one deflected. And I believe we're going to get corner kick number five here in this second half. Well, actually, they're going to say it's a goal kick. Interesting. I thought for sure that that caromed off of somebody. I don't think the linesman saw it. The game was just running down. And then when the game's 5-0, no one really cares, apparently. So, Lady Warriors, though, definitely playing, having a lot of fun out here. 
And how could you not when you're just living down here on the attacking third? And like you said, for some of these defensive players, getting in on the attack probably more so than they do in a lot of typical matches. But that's been the case for Ontario in this tournament. Still got a big goose egg that they've been pitching shutouts. Third straight game here, 7 nothing win over Shelby in their opener, 10 nothing against Colombian to win the sectional title and back to their dominant ways in the district semifinals. Yeah, quite quite the impressive three game start to tournaments. You always like to you know start the tournaments off on a high note and to not concede a goal and to just kind of be running up the scoreboard a little bit. Those are those are two good attributes to have. My guess is that will change a little bit come come the next game here. Maybe not the conceding, but certainly I don't see them running up the score against either one of those teams. Well, they did play them both during the regular season. Me and you, I believe, both called the match over at the Clear Fort Corral, mm -hmm. which they won. I think it was 3-1 or maybe 3 nothing. Yeah, I believe it was 3-1. I think Clearport had a, a bit of a strange goal, if I'm not mistaken, there. I got it right in front of me. Let's see. Where's that at? Yeah, it's right there in the middle. Yeah, okay, Clearport. Oh, actually, 3 nothing. Oh, it was 3-0, okay. I know that the, the Colts certainly would, would love a rematch with Ontario, just meaning that they get an opportunity to be playing in the district finals for for the first time in, in a long time. Yeah. I think it's been like eight, nine years since Coach Bechtel's bunch has been to a district final, and it's it's been tough sledding around here, though, with the Taylor Huff era and everything that Madison did, and then for Larry Atkinson and his crew. They're about to punch their ticket to the 14th straight district championship match. That just seems absurd. I wonder if there's any other team in the state that's done that. Mm. That's an interesting trivia question. I'm glad that was not tonight's trivia question because I have no idea. Well, it can't be because I don't know the answer <laughs> either, Jesse. But I, I would uh, definitely love to know if that's the longest streak in the state. Mm. Someone's going to start doing some Googling here. Mm -hmm. Let us know. If you mm -hmm. if you find out that information, I don't know. You know. Some of the other sectionals, maybe a team like Granville, they've been good for a while, but I don't know about 14, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's been – well, I don't know. Granville has been good for about a decade and a half, so maybe? Maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah. then? Hmm. Oh, I mean, I, now, I'm, now I'm perplexed. I might have to look <laughs> that up. I did love my conversation that I had with the Granville coach when he played at Clear Fork. When I asked him, I was like, is this about the best five-year stretch that you guys have had? And he kind of giggled, and he's like, well, you've been going to state for quite a while now. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Excuse me, Scott. Sorry. For yeah. That. And then he schooled me on the game and gave me some of their accolades. I, I did not realize how dominant they had been yeah. for as long as they had been. I knew here in recent memory, of course, getting to the state finals a lot. But been doing it for about a decade and a half under his watch. So that's a team, obviously, that you got to keep an eye on if you're Ontario or whoever emerges here from the district. Not sure where they would match up I in think, the regional. I think it's state championship. I don't. Would be? I think okay. it's, that's, it, you don't see them until the state championship. I know they had a bit of an upset last year. They you know, lost yeah. to Bexley early on, maybe in the district championship, actually. But so they at least got there. They got there, which allows them to stay in the trivia question. So mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to think, you know, the Cleveland area, there's so many strong teams. I don't think there's been a dominant team. Obviously, there's been teams that have been good for a while, but I don't think that dominant. But certainly, oh, that's a good opportunity for Ontario. Deflect it out. Ontario's going to keep it in for another opportunity here. It's a good ball across. It's still right there for Perkins to kind of keep going. Let's see what Bolikovsky does with it. Just going to trigger it. Now they'll shift it to the other side. Here's Jugovic. And I think she found the back, slipped right through the hands of Farlow. Yeah. Just misplayed it. Yeah, she's she played so well for so long here for Ontario. Just... You know, a little bit of frustration from Perkins defenders. Hattie's obviously a very skilled player, and to see again, it's that that setup touch right there. Just moves a little, little juke move to separate from the defender, and that that, that setup touch. She just gets that ball right where she wants it, hits it cleanly. Wasn't the best looking attempt for her, but goals are goals at this point. You do what you got to do. Now the pirate ship definitely starting to sink here, Jesse in Richland County, as Yugovic with a hat trick. Pittman's just got two, so if she wants to keep pace with her freshman buddy, she's going to have to get to work here. It but is interesting that I, I see she's checked back into the game now. I thought she might be done for the evening, and you start to rest some of these players and get them ready for the next game, but she checked back in. Looks like Addie Turnball's still out there as well, so you do wonder at some point, do you uh, do you send them uh, to the bench there, let them bundle up and get warm? and. Probably that way, you know, big collisions like this. I mean, if that hits the outside of the knee or anything, you know, how tragic, of course, 
after you're up 6 nothing, No need for you to be in the contest. But at the same time, valuable minutes. It's their first yeah. time playing in the tournament in varsity. Absolutely, and these girls love to play. And so I, I've been on that, that, that season before where, you know, you, you're out there and the game is clearly clearly won, but you've got 20-some minutes left to play, and you've got to decide, do I rest my players or do I just let my players keep whining about not playing? <laughs> so you gotta got to figure out which one makes the most sense in the, in the setting there. Uh, I would like to get an update at some point here on the Mansfield Christian boys and see what they're up to, if you can get you some information on that. We actually we don't have anybody at that game tonight. We did see the girls last night. Unfortunately, their season came to a close against the top seed in Bluffton. But I, I told the, the Flames boys they'd have to get to a district final. They wanted some more OH report coverage. Then we'll get them the rest of the way. Absolutely. They are up 1-0 with 20 minutes left. Nice. So it's, it's the, oh, Perkins got a chance to go forward here. Sophia's going to be offsides. Yeah, it's well offsides. That's just a frustration there from Perkins. Yeah, you finally get a chance to go forward, break down the Ontario line. Just, it's hard to keep that momentum from just running forward and just you know, outrunning the back line of Ontario there. Fun stat for you, Jesse. That's the first offsides against either unit today. We've also had zero fouls. None. I don't ever remember a game where that's the case. Wow. Not a single foul. Maybe that's why the players are still in the game. <laughs> True. I think you're more worried about like a knee injury or something in a setting like this, but still, zero, zero foul. It's very clean. Boy, a lot of people could play keeper for Ontario. A lot of people could ref this game. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Very friendly atmosphere right now. Well, let's go down to the world of Beraldo. What's he got for me? That was a knuckleball. Threw everyone off. Not sure what he's talking about exactly. And, but hey, there's our guy out there working hard. Hasn't moved. But he's hanging in there, just eavesdropping on Larry and his staff. All the friendly nuggets that we can get, we're sharing. What a job for him, too. I mean, that's the perfect role for Travis. Go stand in the wind. <laughs> what oh, a shot. Big what a gun. goal. Oh, Top my goodness. Shelf. Let it rain, girl. Jakiah Trammell just struck it. That ball just kind of rolled back to her, stepped into it. We talked about that earlier. That's a dream ball. Jakiah does exactly right, just steps into it. Doesn't try to overhit it. Just one time. Look at that laser mm. right over the keeper for Perkins. Jakiah Trammell, what a goal. What a strike. What a night for Ontario. They are rocking and rolling here at Lexington. Seven zip. And the Pirates at least have it down at this end for the first time. Let's see if they can at least get some type of a clean look. Sophia will get the first shot. And Mullins handles it. So she at least got tested. She got in the match for a purpose, Jesse. That was it. Yeah, absolutely. Gets, gets to touch the ball there. Gets to play a little bit. And Ontario hasn't really gone to the bench too much. I mean, the thing with Ontario, they go to the bench and they're still loaded. So it's not like there's a big let off. I mean, they've, I would say they probably play 15 or 16 players to begin with. Tournament roster, you take 22. So there's only a few girls that haven't been in yet. I'm sure they'd like to get in here, get some minutes in. And turn it's probably about time. that time, right? Yep, it's about that time. You're up by seven, about ten minutes to go. You know, sometimes there's always those weird stat lines that you think about as a coach, like you don't want to give up a goal, you want to keep your, your tournament shutout streak, and mm -hmm. you know, there's all those little mind games, just trying to think things through. Obviously, you want these players to play and you know get their minutes as well, and so just all sorts of little decisions you have to make. I'd probably definitely keep Turnbine back here. I mean, she's just a, a one-lady wrecking crew, and you see her right here. I mean, she, she's just winning everything. Uh, but up top, I don't know if they really need Bullock Cosby and, uh, and the stud freshman like Pittman in the game anymore. But at the same time, like you said, if they're on the sideline, they're just going to be saying that they want back mm -hmm. in. Yeah, the, he's got <laughs> players that love to play, so he's got to choose your battles a little bit of which battle do you want to win and which one do you want to kind of concede to. Trammell again. I thought she was just going to try to whack <laughs> yeah, yeah, at it. Yeah, I thought that too. That there's a step in there. I thought she might just have another one here. Chance here for the shot. It's going to be deflected, though, off the right foot of Elena Seif. But right back to an Ontario player. It's Young pushing it out wide. And the Pirates just going to send it out of play. So a throw in coming up here on the near side as we're approaching. The 10-minute mark in our first of two district semifinal matchups. Of course, the later, the, the dinner portion of tonight, the one that we're expecting to be a, a much better 
matchup with number two Clear Fork going head to head with number three Lexington. Two teams that tied during the regular campaign, but I remember I, I got a chance to talk to the coaching staff of Clear Fork in their parking lot when they got back from that game, and they said that they had like 35 mm. shots and they weren't able to score, and it was mm -hmm. the most frustrating match that they've had all season. So we'll see if our, they're able to turn the page on that one. And yeah, I, I think through. it's going to be a fun competitive match. I think both teams, they look back at that game, think that wasn't probably our best game. I think probably Clear Fork more so than Lexington, but you know, talking with both coaching staff, they feel like that game – could have gone a variety of ways, and you know that neither team scored, but Clearport had plenty of chances. But Lex had some quality chances, and so mm -hmm. it's, you know, it, those types of games it, in a regular season it isn't zero zero, but in a game type tonight, you're you're going to have a winner. You know, there's going to be a team that advances, as a team that's done, and so that, you know, that that kind of uh, that tournament atmosphere gets to be a lot of fun. I and mean, obviously, we saw with the boys on Terra the night a late. A late game goal to tie it up and go to overtime. You know, Perkins knows all too well about the, the overtime goals. and So overtime can be uh, the greatest gift or the worst nightmare, depending on how it goes for you. And then Lex obviously coming through on PKs against Madison. I mean, what uh, what yeah. an emotional ride that is for them as well. You get so excited to do, you know, to beat the team that's you know, won it the past five years. And then you got to go play again against uh, an arguably better opponent this year. And then, you know, keep it, it, tournaments can be such a mental battle of, Focusing on that next game and celebrating the previous game, but then being done celebrating and focusing. So it's it's quite the ride. Score from Tiffin Mansfield Christian uh, just scored again, and they are up two zero with just under ten minutes to play. Ooh, baby, baby, looking to punch their ticket into the district finals. As Ontario is just under nine minutes away from doing themselves, as this one a lot of trajectory. A couple players had an opportunity to run under it. And this one stuffed into the back. The onslaught continues. Warriors rolling as it's now 8-zip. It's a good ball in, good opportunity there. Just You can see the Perkins wall. They've got enough players back there. But that's a good turn. That's a tough turn to just kind of turn in stride and hit the ball cleanly like that. So that's, that's a good play to be able to kind of just turn and step into it, keep it on target, and then... A little bit of luck, skill, whatever you want to call it, to break down the Perkins wall. And it's another youngster, too. Stevens, just a sophomore, so all the scoring tonight basically coming from the youth. Actually, all of them have. Three sophomores have scored. We got the hat trick by Yukovic. Couple goals from Addie Pittman. And the Warriors in total control. And they've probably had possession in this half. 93 percent i mean yeah <laughs> yeah we, we saw perkins had one kickoff where they went down and got a shot off and then you know uh, one other breakaway it's about the only two times i remember them crossing the f the half field here and, you know it's we, we talked about there, there's a difference in strength of schedule different and just kind of uh opponent history and kind of the precedent that has been set sure but you're excited for a team like perkins you hate to lose by eight in your final tournament game but you know they got a, a good tournament win against mansfield senior I selfishly want to see Mansfield Senior get to this game because I just think it's a good experience for them. they got a young group that's a lot of fun to watch, and I think this is a, a good lesson for them to learn. But, you know, Perkins did what they needed to do to get here, and so you just kind of got to, you know, take take the highs that come with this. Obviously, no one likes to lose. No one likes to lose by eight, but you made it here. You, you know, you won a tournament game. You won your conference. You, you've done so many things that have never been done before, or at least in a long time, and so never. Credit, credit never for them. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's probably never here. You know, credit the Perkins coaching staff and the players for just being able to get to this moment at this point. It's quite an accolade. Yeah, you got to take the stepping stones. It's very rare that you're going to break into your first district and that you're going to go on to win that district and that you're going to go on to do bigger and better things. So for them, you know, they're just starting to take the first progressive steps. They won their first ever conference championship a season ago. They went back to back this year. Now they won their first ever sectional championship and a lot, a lot of young players on the roster. School record 13 wins for the Pirates. So you obviously expect them to probably be back in this position again next year where they're competing to get into the round of districts. But as you alluded to as well, I do love the young players for Mansfield Senior and what the Tigers are starting to develop. So there's, there's a lot of fun, exciting young teams in the area. And the sectional tournament, it, it's going to be loaded next year in Division Two down here in the Richland area. They're just a lot of fun, a lot of quality players. And 
seems like that's kind of how it's been here for a while. But with the emergence of teams like Perkins and Mansfield Senior, it even just adds a, a bigger collection of more teams that we can see competing. Instead, yeah. of the, instead of the same Madison, Lexington, Clearport, Ontario. Absolutely. You know, I, I agree with that. You know, a little fun talking point just for the later game. I, you can see uh, in certain camera angles, you can see Lexington warming up behind the goal. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I just saw the Clearport bus just pull in. So oh. I think kickoff is about 45 minutes away. I think it's scheduled for a 7:15 kickoff. But uh, usually Coach Bechtel's got him out here and moving around. So I don't know if maybe the coach uh, or the, you know, there's all sorts of bus shortages, a driver shortage. A lot of things could factor into that or, you know, who knows. But I think I'm 90% I'm sure I just saw the Clearford bus just pull into the parking lot here. So a little bit of an interesting development there. Hmm, maybe, maybe a strategy. <laughs> Don't let them think too much about it. Just roll off the bus, get right to work. Oh, I never, I never went for that <laughs> strategy. Like that as a strategy coach. No, 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 we were always the other way. Let's get there early, settle down a little bit, have some fun, and then start focusing when it's time to start focusing. So. To each their own, though, if it is a strategy. I don't think it is. I think yeah, Coach Beckham and I are yeah. similar in our preparations. Usually very prepared, that young one. Driven across the front of the six here. It'll be out of bounds for a goal kick. Yeah, Perkins is going to end the season 13-3-3. and three. Took a weird loss at the end of the season to Port Clinton, who, uh, you know, a team they probably traditionally, or at least would have looked like they would have beat this year. Um, it's still a great record nonetheless, and you know some some great statistics. Um, looking at their season there, beat Shelby, who's a, a nice and up-and-coming team. I liked what Shelby did against Ontario earlier on. I thought they competed well, 7-0 uh, in, in their tournament game. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other games there. You know, beat a good Crestview team. You know, they, they've got some uh, pretty good results there. I think Norwalk they beat and tied. So you look at their schedule. I know that Sandusky Bay Conference is kind of a roller coaster in terms of. You know, sometimes you don't know how good teams are until you get outside of your conference, and Sandusky Bay doesn't always get outside of their conference well. It's a good good attempt, a bit of a missed shot there. Yeah, there's so many darn teams in that conference that yeah, th yeah. sometimes, I mean, they could play a whole schedule of, of just SBC teams, and that's the bulk majority of what they have done. Now, is S SBC split into two, right? Is there, They've got three. There's three? Yeah, oh, they got okay. the Bay, River, and Lake. <laughs> so... I think there's more than 20 teams up there. So the Sandusky Bay Conference has a Bay, River, and Lake yeah. division within their conference? They do. That's interesting. They do. Ran out of body to water? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, maybe the Creek Division coming <laughs> soon? <laughs> the, or or the Creek? Divi division three teams? <laughs> I don't know. Could be. Is it based on the size of water? Does that matter? Or is it just a name? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All these trivia questions tonight that w we just don't have great answers for. Right. Somebody get out there and start Googling things. We need some answers. Oh, okay. Excellent. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate your, your willingness to help out. It, he gave us a fake Google there. <laughs> I, I don't think any fingers were actually hitting keys, but. It's like Ask Jeeves. <laughs> Did you ever use Ask Jeeves? Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> what a guy. I remember when he came around at, at the very beginning back in the day. I mean, that was, geez, long time ago. I was in like high school when Jeeves came around. Well, this is where it gets uh, a couple more changes here for Ontario. See a lot of players who have not been in the game getting in, including a keeper for Ontario who I think is Darby Broom, who's also a freshman. She's not on the varsity roster that I have, but I believe that is her. So I can look out there. See some other girls out there getting their first minutes. Looks like Missy Powers out there. Trying to see some other numbers from here, but. Ontario kind of rotating some players in, giving some of those minutes away now. You know, you, you love to get out of here. You win by eight, keep the shutout, get everybody in if you can. It's kind of a good rotation for Ontario. Probably the night they wanted, the night they needed in preparation for what's next. And they have, of course, left Addie Turnbaugh in, basically the lone defender back right now for the Warriors. Here she is cleaning up a quick mess. Solid turn. And she might just make a run at this, Jesse. She, she probably wants to get the scoring calling to him. She's like, en enough of all these young guys. How about a senior going coast to coast and takes a little bump at the end and lost it. So hopefully someone can cover for her as we're sub one minute remaining. Yeah, I think you just see the little bit of the, the skill that Addie Turnbull has. Certainly playing center back in a game like this doesn't quite uh, demonstrate how good she is. But, I mean, she can go forward, she can defend, she can win out of the air, she keeps possession. I mean, she just does everything you want your center back to do, including wanting to play center back. That's not, you know, a lot of center backs want to go up and score. They want to get out of there. And, you know, Addie Turnbull is 
whether it's her decision, the coach's decision, or an agreement somewhere, I mean, she has went back to the center back position and done a terrific job at it. I would assume they kind of met somewhere in the middle because she, she was such a good scorer. I remember, I think she led the team in scoring as a sophomore, if, if memory serves me correctly. So last year, there must have been a conversation where, you know, we've got some young kids coming up, pretty gifted in this department. Could really use you on that back line. Yeah, she was a good central midfielder as well. Be the final corner kick for Ontario, bouncing around oh, oh. off the bar. At the horn, Ontario. I've lost track of their shots. I think they're at 40 now as they win it. Eight nothing going away to keep the blowout perfect streak intact here in the playoffs. We're going to step aside real quick. We'll be back. Final stats, quick interview, and more. Keep it here. and turn up every moment with Frito-Lay Variety Packs. Instead of paying for some big-name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Coming from the Shelby Whippets, Isaiah Ramsey. He's caught our attention over here, and we're certainly going to keep an eye on the Willard Flashes. We will see you next week on the Stat Leaders Brock uh, Spitzer of the next year.
I'm here with Frito Lay MVP freshman phenom Hattie Yukovic. Hattie, first district semifinal game. What did you think after the game was over? What's going through your mind right now? I'm really happy. I'm really proud of how we played and how we came together as a team in the final third, and I'm just really happy right now. Absolutely. You know, a little bit of a slow start for you guys. 2-0 at halftime, and then start the second half, score two quick goals in about two minutes. What changed? What was the difference from first half to second half? Uh, you know, at halftime we were like, we just got to finish in the final third, and I think we came out and we did that tremendously, and that really helped a lot with our confidence. So looking ahead at a district championship, which in Ontario has been all too familiar, but brand new for you, what's your thoughts as you think about playing either Lexington or Clear Fork or for the district championship? I'm really excited. I know both teams are really good, and whichever one comes out on top, I know it's going to be a good game and it's going to be challenging, but we're just going to have to play our game, find our passes, and find the back of the net when it's on. You know, I, I'm really impressed with you. Just your maturity and the way you play the game, the way you conduct yourself in interviews. You just do a great job. I would ask you who you want to play, but I'm not going to do that to you. We could talk about that off air. For you guys, we, we've talked before about you know, the, the dreams and the possibilities of this team. What's, what's the realistic expectations at this point looking forward for you guys? I think right now is to win a district championship. You know, that's probably the biggest goal. You know, we haven't won in about five years, and I think right now that is what we should look forward to. That is the right answer. You got it. Frito-Lay MVP, Hattie Yukovic. We're going back up to you guys in the booth. Thanks, guys. All right. Appreciate it. Jesse and Hattie Good with job. the hat trick. Something, I don't know exactly how many times this season, but that freshman probably at least like four or five. She's unbelievable. What an athlete. What a performance here. Punching the ticket for the 14th consecutive season for Ontario and their head coach, Larry Atkinson, into the district championship. Wow, what a statistic that is. All right, speaking of statistics, you want to be blown away by some total and complete domination. Let's look at the final stats of the evening brought to you guys by Mechanics Bank. And look at the shot differential, 41 to 2. Ontario with possession, 84% of the night. They seldom had to defend the keeper, Basically had a night off. Two saves for Ontario on the other side. Valiant effort for Topanga. She had 20. She was tested a whole lot tonight. But, man, the Lady Warriors, they were as advertised. The number one seed will be moving on. Who will they face? We're going to show you guys. We've got the second match coming up here in our doubleheader. Lexington going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Clear Fork. The winner of that match, of course, is going to take on these Lady Warriors. They are going to be a tough out. But we're going to sign out for now here from Lexington High School at the beautiful soccer complex. We'll see you guys in just a few short minutes on the second half of our doubleheader. So for Jesse, I'm Brian and the entire crew with the OH Report. So long. We'll be right back at it.